Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Nagy and this is the Modern Maker Workroom. Today we're going to talk about making this fine little hat. Something that I normally don't do but I want to do more of is exploring machine sewing and garments that are relevant to today's wardrobe. For me, this is all about creating my fall cottagecore menswear collection. And when I say collection, it's really just a small batch of pieces that I can mix and match together along with some purchased things to have the aesthetic, the warm, cozy fall aesthetic that I want to give out to the world. So to start that, I wanted to make some new hats. This is made out of a pair of recycled jeans. Um, they're a pair of jeans that uh, were worn for many years. They've been well washed. Don't worry. Make sure that they're nice and clean before you cut them out. And um, we prepare a hat pattern and um, get started. And it really doesn't take very long to make them. Now, I am not a hat maker. I'm not a milliner by any stretch of the imagination. But thankfully, these hats are quite soft. They're simple to make and uh, they go very quickly. I think when I'm really in a groove, I can cut and make one in less than an hour. So with that in mind, let's have a look at the pattern. Now, this pattern that you're seeing here is a proportional draft that I developed based on a pattern that has come out of a book. And that book is called Patterns for Costume Accessories by Arnold S. Levine and Robin L. McGee. Now, these are people that live in New York City. They work in the Broadway, uh, the Broadway craft industry. So they do a lot of this work, and they've done it for years and years and years. And this book has always been a go-to for me uh, in film and television and in theater when I really need to make something and I'm not sure where to get started. So I can always count on them to have a pattern in this book. Now, the proportional draft that I've created is based on this, but I've made some modifications so that the styling of the hat is a little bit more current. Now, the way the pattern works is quite simple. You just measure your head circumference um, just above the ears, and you really don't need to measure particularly tightly or loosely. You just wrap the tape around so that it's level across your ears and take that measurement. And that's what you see is the CIRC, the CIRC measurement. And then you simply divide by the number that I've given you and draw the appropriate line. We have verticals and we have horizontals and you can plot the shape and then it's perfectly scaled to the circumference of your head. Now that will scale the length of the hat as well as the width of the hat. So if you have quite a large head, you might want to make some, make a mock-up and maybe make some adjustments so that it fits your aesthetic the way you want it to. But for the most part, it should work pretty well across uh, all head sizes, just because the difference between head sizes is so small when you compare it to the difference between body shapes. You will need a lining fabric, an exterior fabric, uh, and some heavy craft felt to use for the bill. Now, uh, for the felt, sometimes I have used multiple layers of uh, thin craft felt and just stitched them together so that they have some stiffness. Or if you can find a thick craft felt that is approximately 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch, that is uh, 3 to 5 millimeters in thickness, then uh, you'll be able to create the bill exactly the same way that I've done it here. So you'll take your pattern pieces and you'll begin to lay them out on the lining. Now what you'll notice throughout this whole process is that I'm actually making two hats at one time because they're so small and they're so fast to make, it's just really efficient to do it this way and why make one hat when I can make two? Besides, if I'm in the middle of sewing and I make one badly, then I have another one where I can just reach for it and start and the amount of fabric is so uh, small that it won't make any difference. I know you can't see the lines on here that I'm cutting out, but uh, I am definitely tracing them down. So from the lining fabric, I only need the main body of the hat and the side panels because the bill is lined with self fabric so I don't really have to worry about it. As you're cutting out these pieces, lining fabric, exterior fabric, it doesn't matter. You can see right here, just make sure that you clip the notches. Without the notches clipped, you're not going to have your matching points and then you'll have to use a whole bunch of pins which just slows down the entire process. Um, and it looks like I may have missed a notch so I put my pattern back down and uh, made sure to double check it. Now here we go with the jeans. And this is an old pair of jeans. It's been washed a thousand times. So the, it really has some nice softness and some good 
good denim aging. I love the way denim ages and, and has unique colorations. So then to get started, I'm going to begin by just cutting them open so that I have a flat leg to work on. I'm not going to cut the out seam, but I'm going to cut straight up the, the seat and then I'm going to cut through the crotch. I'm just going to go along the side of the fly so they don't have to cut through any metal pieces and destroy my scissors. Because really this section is not a place that I'm worried about using uh, in the hat. So first is to open up the seat area and the crotch and then I'm going to just slice up the inseam so that I have a nice big piece that I can uh, use to cut my hat. Now I have two legs, therefore again I'm going to cut two hats. So I'll lay out the hat on this area. Now I'm going to make some choices on where I want the aging in the fabric to sit on the hat. And I really like kind of a sun bleached feeling on the crown of the hat, so I eventually settle on having the uh, light portion of the front thigh here right at the front of the bill. And I think that it just will make a really beautiful hat that has the right textures in the right places. So I'll put that there and then I will align all of the rest of the pieces and um, get them traced out. And then I'll move on to preparing the second half of the legs. I just draw everything on one leg and then I put the second leg underneath, wrong sides together and uh, just go for it. And then I just start cutting it out. And uh, I'm trying to be efficient here. Again, I'm cutting two different hats out at the same time. So uh, you see that I've made two copies of the bill. I've made two copies of the sides. And the sides are going to have different uh, fabric shading on them because of the different locations. So I want to make sure that those stay together. And there, there's, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, as I get further in. So I'm making a couple of rough cuts here just so I can get my scissors into the right angle to cut these out. Um, now here's a big thing. I chalked these out with a piece of Taylor's wax that was a little bit thick on the edge. So you see how fat my white lines are. And you'll notice as I'm cutting that I actually will make an effort to cut the lines off, right? I'm positioning the scissors on the inside edge of the fat white line. And that makes sure that I'm cutting along the area where the pattern actually was instead of adding size to the pattern shape, which is a, a real big no-no when you're dealing with uh, hats because even an eighth of an inch in one area can completely change the way the hat fits and works. Uh, so just you have to be extra careful with uh, making sure that you cut accurately with your lines. Now once I have the main body out, then I grab my felt and I will cut two bills out of the felt. An important thing to notice here though is the pattern that I'm using to cut the bill out has had the seam allowances removed and actually quite a bit of the seam allowance removed and on the inner edge that goes against the forehead I've scooped out even more. Uh, uh, upwards of three quarters of an inch has been carved out just to leave space for the shaping and the thickness of the layers to interact with each other. So just keep that in mind as you're working. Now that I've got the felt cut out the way it needs to be, I'm going to organize my pattern pieces. So you see me here looking at my sides to make sure that the coloration is the same. Now that, that coloration concept is unique to cutting things out of denim and upcycling a denim garment, uh, but it's still good to just to make sure that you've got the same concept happening on both sides. Otherwise the hat can look a little bit sloppy and they're already casual enough as it is. So I will separate out all of my layers. I've got my linings here. I've got one set of sides there, another set of sides there. And then uh, also there are smaller bits that I have to think about. Like I want to put a label in each one of those. Some of you may have labels and you want to make sure that you set those up in your, in your stacks. There's one label there and another label there. Now, to make sure that the hat fits the correct way, you want to have a stay tape inside the uh, edge around the head opening. So I'm going to make some marks here, and I'm just measuring the length, which is the circumference of my head, plus about three-eighths of an inch. And so I measure that out, and uh, then I find the ends, and I find the halfway mark. And this is just uh, one inch, one and a quarter inch wide, bias cotton tape that I purchase on a roll. You can get a small package of it at the sewing store. 
I'm going to flatten it out a little bit here with the iron, but this serves as the hat band on the inside. You can also cut yourself a piece of bias out of your cotton fabric. Uh, I like to use something that contrasts a little bit with the lining just so that it looks a little bit more professional. It could be fun to make this match the lining though if you've got a good cotton for the lining. Um, now we're going to actually start the sewing. So the sewing process always works from the smallest pieces to the largest pieces. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to line the notches up with the notches on the, the, the bill piece and then I'm just top stitching this right on. Now this is actually the, the upper side of the bill so this goes against the body of the hat so you won't see any of the stitching coming through. Uh, but it's important to get the felt stuck in the right spot. So I am just lining everything up, making sure that I keep my seam allowances where they belong. And so I'll go around the entire thing. And you can see here as I sew around the uh, inner edge how much room I have between the edge of my felt and the cut edge of my fabric. So I've gone upwards of about three quarters of an inch uh, or two centimeters um, with the felt, I've trimmed that out uh, from the forehead edge. Now, with those done, now I'm going to sew the actual seam. And with this, I, I've got the presser foot right on top of the edge of the felt so that the needle is just next to the edge of the felt, but not going through it. This way, it uh, gets a nice tight edge. And what will happen is as I pull the fabric around the edge of the felt, the side that's exposed, the underside of the bill will actually get a little bit tight because of the displacement of the edges and it'll make the bill curl slightly in just the right direction. And you'll see what I mean uh, in just one more step. Again, I'm using a small seam allowance so I don't have to clip corners or curves or anything. So I'm going to turn this right side out and then I'm just going to use the machine to stitch uh, the open edge closed. I'm just top stitching this right on. I'm just going right next to the edge and what you're going to see here is that the tension differential between the two sides, the one that does not have the felt and the one that does, just naturally makes this underside a little bit tighter and it's going to um, just make the bill curve in a perfect three-dimensional way with almost no effort. And you know that's the kind of thing that I love in a sewing process is something that happens effortlessly. Continuing on with the, uh, the sew the small bits first, this is that piece of bias which has been cut to the same exact length as the, the stay tape that I put inside uh, plus a quarter inch seam allowance at either end. So I'm just stitching the quarter inch seam allowance here and then because it's a, just a plain piece of cotton and I don't want to waste time going to the iron, I'll just uh, finger press the seam open because that's all I really need. Just the way that it's going to be sewn in just doesn't require a hard press uh, at the iron. So the fewer times I can get up from the machine to go do something at the iron, the better. So with that done, I'm going to move into doing the body parts. So the first thing that I'll do then, I'll move into doing the lining. So the label gets sewn on next. And I want to make sure that I'm sewing this with the label right side up as viewed from uh, holding the hat in your hand on the bill. So when I'm looking into the hat and I'm holding it, about to pop it onto my head, I want to be able to see that label right side up. Uh, and this is so different from anything the modern maker's ever done, talking about label placement. But you want that to be, every time that person puts the hat on, your brand identity is in your label and you want them to see that and be able to think about your brand as that hat goes on the head. It's a split second in their day, but it's really effective for making sure that you have brand loyalty and brand identity. So I want to make sure that's in a good spot. So it's slightly toward the back, which is a typical place for labels. Uh, and it's just sewn right on around the edges. Now the next thing I'll do is sew the dart and this is, is quite easy. A lot of people obsess over sewing darts but in terms of a hat it's not the same as when you're sewing a bust dart. You can just do a straight line and it will it will function exactly the way that it's supposed to. So quarter inch seam allowance once again I'm just sewing from the tip to the edge and done. Um, this I will eventually go and press open with the iron, but uh, I'm again going to take as few steps to the iron as possible. So I'm clipping my threads and then I'm going to finger press it open at some point later. Then the next thing I'll do here is I will sew the center front seam of the sides. Now this is completely hidden in the final construction of the hat. 
the bill covers it on the exterior fabrics and then this is hidden very much inside the the hat when it's worn so you're never going to see this seam so uh, there's no reason to cut it as a whole piece we just put a seam there and again here i am just finger pressing it open making sure that it's very fast and easy i don't have to do a lot so my next step then is to sew the sides onto the top now I have notches in place, especially going around this uh, curve where you have a concave and a convex going into each other. So that notch is really important to make sure that I'm pulling the top layer and lining it up with the bottom layer the right way. Notice, no pins. I'm concentrating on constantly adjusting my raw edges to meet each other perfectly while aiming for that notch. And it is surprisingly fast and easy when you get into this habit and you see that I'm controlling one layer with the bottom hand and the other layer with the top hand. Now this is a, a hand position and a sewing technique that you will see used in factory sewing settings all the time. It's very efficient. The notches will line everything up and if your pattern is well made the notches will align when you sew. It's just a different way of thinking about how to get something through the machine. You see as I'm working I am I, I move my hand to check to see that the notch is going to line up exactly. Once I hit that notch, then I just go right past it and uh, continue around and around, trusting that my hands know what to do. You see how fast and easy this is? Those pattern pieces are just lining right up as they go under the presser foot. This is an essential sewing technique if you want to work faster at home, if you want to eliminate the use of pins the way professionals do, this is the kind of work that you need to do. Your notches become your essential uh, matching tool rather than um, using pins to line everything up. Also, people end up sewing over pins and breaking their needles and damaging their machines, and this really saves you from that. And in the long run, the time saved is essential to your efficiency. So when I reach the end, I am going to clip my threads and I will sew exactly the same seams now on the exterior. The big difference that you'll see when I'm sewing these seams on the exterior is there's decorative top stitching that happens. So I'm sewing the entirety of the hat save for one little bit of top stitching in the lining with the contrasting color thread that I use for jeans. So you'll see here that I'm finger pressing the dart open at the back of the hat and then I'm going to stick it under the machine right side up. I almost did it the wrong way up. And I will stitch an eighth of an inch away from the dart seam. And I'll come from the cut edge into the point of the dart. And then I will turn the fabric and take a couple stitches and then work my way back down. And it just adds that extra denim -y feel when you have that top stitching. Although I do use this with any fabric that I make, I just top stitch the seam. It looks good, it helps the structure of the hat on its own when you're nailing those layers together with these top stitching lines. But then on top of it also, it just, it looks really nice and crisp and professional. While also saving a trip to the iron. All of these top stitching passes mean that I just stay in the same spot and I don't have to press anything. Following the same order of operations that I used on the lining, I will grab the sides and I'll stitch this center front seam and then top stitch it open. One of the things that is true about working with almost any fabric to make these hats, your head opening edge has quite a bit that's on the bias. So as you're working, every little bit that you're handling these fabrics is one of the reasons why I don't want to pin so much. Every bit that you're handling the fabrics, you're, you've got these opportunities for all of the edges to stretch. So the notches become really important, the grain lines on which they're cut become really important, and all of these small details start to pile up. And so one of the reasons why I really like putting the stay tape in as the, you know, one of the final steps before um, putting the hat band on is because you use that moment to pull everything back in and then you trust that your, your stay tape measurement is accurate to what you need to wear. You add that 3 eighths of an inch because the hat itself has thickness. So once that's in, then it should fit snugly. If you were to make it exactly to your hat band measurement, the thickness of the fabric would then make it actually too tight to wear. 
Now I'm putting this underneath here so that I can top stitch both edges of the seam that attaches the sides to the top. Now this is a very curved seam, it's a lot of fiddly work, so I make sure to turn the hat inside out so that I'm stitching more or less flat onto the surface of the machine. If I don't do this and I try to leave the hat uh, right side out, it's really, really difficult to stitch this seam, to top stitch this well uh, and, and have it look really nice. Again, I'm trying to stay an eighth of an inch from the seam itself, and I'll do that on both sides so that it has a really nice clean appearance. In retrospect, I probably actually should have started this whole process with white thread in the sewing machine so that because I sewed the lining first, there's no reason for me to have the contrast denim thread in here. Uh, so I've switched my machine to white, even though I stitched the main body of the lining in the, the denim yellow. Uh, but now I'm top stitching the seam allowance. Now this is different from the exterior in that I'm top stitching the seam allowance only to one direction. It doesn't really matter whether I top stitch it onto the sides or top stitch the allowances onto the top, but I want both seam allowances going the same direction. And what this does is it stiffens the, the lining just a little bit more and it helps give the hat some structure since we're not putting any kind of interfacing inside. Now, you could use an interlining or an interfacing in the main body of the hat, the outside of the hat, if you have a particularly soft fabric that you want to have a little bit more body. I tend to choose stiffer fabrics to make hats, so I don't have to do that, but uh, whatever you're going to work with, you want to make sure that you have that consistency of like a decent thickness of wool when you're done. Now that the exterior and the interior are complete, now I'm just going to put them together. So this is a very simple process. I just stick the lining inside, line up the seams. I know that they're accurate because they're all cut from the same patterns. And then I just put the cut edges together and I'm stitching about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch away from the edge. And it goes really fast. There's no need to fuss too much over this. The very next step is going to be putting the stay tape inside. And that is a little bit fussier because I want to hold the ta stay tape taut and then make sure that my marks match up to the seams. Now the marks that I have are just center front and center back, but regardless, I want to make sure that I'm laying the tape in tight because that helps to make sure that the hat will shrink back down to the correct measurements. Now you'll notice that my thinking is not really trying to avoid the stretching during the process, right? Because of the way the pieces are cut, I am accepting that that is a natural occurrence during the construction, and that's why the stay tape is just automatically a part of this. This is I am accepting that I stretch it and overhandle it when I'm working, and this just compensates for that. So we don't even have to think about it, we don't have to worry about it. All we need to do is just make sure that our marks line up and that the measurement is correct on the stay tape. So your head circumference plus a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So, you know, point, I would say, what, three millimeters to uh, one centimeter. Um, that'll really give you, pardon me, five millimeters to one centimeter will uh, really give you what you need uh, in terms of the correct circumference plus the thickness of the fabric. Now we're gonna add the brim. We've got our stay tape in, it went in perfectly, the lines matched up exactly the way they were supposed to. So I'm going to lay the brim onto the front, that's this little seam right here, and then I'm just gonna walk it around to find the place where I need to actually start stitching. What's so funny to me is that this is the perfect reason to put a notch on the pattern, and I just, for some reason, did not do it. So I just made myself a little bit of a headache trying to line this up. And you see that I ended up also just flipping the hat inside out so that I could get the brim in. Now remember, I, I don't make hats all the time, but I do know how to make this style because it's one of my favorite styles. So now that I've got everything lined up, I'm just gonna stitch this on. Again, everything is a quarter inch seam allowance here. Although I'm using a seam allowance that's slightly shy of a quarter of an inch, just because I know that uh, I'm gonna lay the hat band tape on here and I don't want it to um, do too much stitching to be exposed. You see how I'm sort of stretching the brim, I'm just really kind of manhandling it into position, and that's okay. Uh, it sits nicely no matter what. So now we have that in place. 
The next step is going to be to flip the whole thing inside out and literally just top stitch the entire edge of the brim right onto the underside of the, the front of the hat, underside of the bill. And uh, I save this for last, so it's a nice clean top stitching, but I have to turn the whole hat inside out to be able to get into the area where I need to top stitch. So it's just gonna be a quarter of an inch, uh, you know, six millimeters away from the edge here. And, uh, and I'm just gonna do it. And I'm gonna go real slow with the machine because this is very thick. The felt is thick, the denim is thick, there's a lining involved, so I'm just going to walk my machine carefully along and that will give me what I need in terms of the top stitching while also saving me time from having to replace a broken needle if I went too fast. Now the bill is in, the hat's been stitched. The only thing left to do is to put the hat band on. Now this is top stitched on, which means I'm going to flip the hat the other way around again and work from the inside and this is just laid right on top, covering the top stitching from every step before it, and just adding a nice clean finish here. So I'm just sticking it under the machine and going to go for it. Before I stitch this in, I actually should mention that uh, I had the seam on it, but then I just folded it in half and kind of thumb creased where center front was so that I had something to match up to my center front notch on the bill. Uh, this is a little bit fiddly to go in and again when you're going over the bill area you want to make sure that you move slowly because it is quite thick and you really don't want to damage your machine or break your needle. The rest of it goes very fast. The only thing that remains is to just clip all the remaining threads just to keep it cleaned up, double check everything that it lines up nicely, that it uh, is stitched well. You know, I have a little bit of a bubble bulk on the underside, but it's inside where the lining is. So I'm not super concerned that it's going to affect the fit. And then I just turn the whole thing right side out and give it a press. And really with the pressing, I'm just focusing on the back portion of it where I'm going to fold the hat band inward and create a nice crisp edge at the back of the hat. The front of the hat just kind of falls gently into position once it's on the head. Here's the finished hat on my head. I've, it feels really comfortable. The bill is nice and squishy. I think all of the lines and angles are quite nice. Thank you so much for watching. What a fun little project, and it's great to do something new. Take care, everyone. Bye.